like with good sounds. This is the ninth instructional video in a multi-part series dealing with theatrical sound production and the fourth of several that will deal specifically with wireless microphones. Today, we're going to discuss the different mic elements and what might work best for you. When it comes to wireless microphones for the theater, there are basically two options, earpieces and lavaliers. Now, handheld microphones can be an option, but obviously it would have to be a situation that made sense to have an actor standing on stage with a microphone. So for our purposes here, we're going to stick to those two options. Earpieces have become increasingly more popular over the years due to their low profile design. They have been redesigned specifically for the theater and come in a variety of flesh colors, sizes, single ear and dual ear, over the ear and under the ear, and cardioid and omnidirectional. Obviously, when considering choices like color, size, and position, those are going to be personal preferences and not something that we necessarily need to discuss. We're going to stick to the benefits that earpiece has and if it's the right choice for you compared to the lavalier. One very nice thing about the earpiece microphone is that it allows for a close miking technique, which means that the mic element is going to be in close proximity to the actor's mouth. Now this can be very helpful in the signal to noise ratio. This means that you will get a relatively high level of signal, which is the actor's voice, and a low level of noise, which is the sound happening around them. Because they can be flesh colored, or at least close to it, they will be relatively discreet from the audience. And if they are properly secured to the actor, this low profile can be even more discreet. Using an earpiece with a cardioid pattern or an omnidirectional pattern is again more of a personal preference. A cardioid pattern is one where the microphone only picks up from one direction and tries to reject sound from the other directions. This microphone can be helpful if you don't have a great setup with a sound system because it won't be picking up a lot of sound from the surrounding areas, like other actors or music. It should allow you to get some more volume before introducing feedback. However, it can tend to give some unwanted color to the actor's voice if it isn't situated properly. Omnidirectional microphones have a pickup pattern of 360 degrees. This makes it easier to reproduce the actor's voice because it isn't as critical where the microphone is located you will have some more leeway with where you position the mic in relation to the actor's mouth. They can also be helpful when needing to grab lines from actors that don't have a mic. Generally, you can position a mic'd actor within a few feet of another actor without a mic and do fairly well with capturing their lines. However, with either type of earpiece, locating the tip of the microphone too close to the mouth will result in a very unpleasant sound with exaggerated breath and harsh plosives with P's and T's. It is also much easier to overload the mic beyond the level it can handle and cause severe distortion. So be careful where you place it. The other option is the lavalier microphone. These are the microphones that you see news anchors wearing, clipped somewhere on their shirt, tie, or jacket. Lavaliers can be great mics to use for the theater, but most people have probably been using them in a way that hasn't been very effective. First of all, let's start by saying you're not going to want to secure a lavalier to an actor's clothing. It will not perform the same way that it does for a news anchor. Your actor is going to be moving around a lot and will undoubtedly create a lot of rustling noise with their clothes. Also, the news anchor is not connected to a live sound system with speakers blaring out into an auditorium they are connected to a broadcast system that doesn't have live sound speakers. So forget about clipping it on clothing. That won't work. Now, sometimes we see lavaliers taped to the side of the face, over the ear, and down the cheek. This is certainly a method that can work. However, it will usually be a lot less discreet than an earpiece because of the thickness of the mic and the cable. Depending on the quality of the lavalier and the quality of the speaker setup, this may be the only option for using a lavalier effectively. And lavaliers, like earpieces, can come both in cardioid and omnidirectional patterns. But there may be other options for using a lavalier on an actor, and one of those is a method that we call the halo mic. With this method, we take a lavalier microphone and some thin cord elastic. 
After measuring the mic cable and the elastic around half the actor's head, we can create a headband that can be secured within the hairline to provide a great sounding microphone that is basically invisible, even to someone standing a few feet away. A simple square knot is tied just behind the mic element that's not too tight. You don't want to cut into the wire inside the jacket. Then another square knot is tied just over the first one, but this time a bit tighter. That first knot will prevent the second one from damaging the cable, but should hold its place over time. Then, taking both the cable and elastic, pull back to the center of the head and do the same thing. This should allow you to adjust tension on the microphone and accommodate different size heads. Of course, you can always start from scratch with every show and each new director. Then the microphone can be positioned at the top of the forehead within the hairline to keep it discreet. And if the microphone isn't sitting in a position where the mic element is pointing down towards the actor's mouth, a simple rotation or two of the mic and the elastic will get it into the right position. You can also slide the microphone to the side of the head if your actor's hairline isn't the best for concealing it at the top. This can also be a good location if your actor is wearing a hat. If your mic is located at the top of the forehead, you will need to make sure that if a hat or a wig is worn, the mic element must be outside the band of the hat or wig. This can affect the sound of the mic, but with some instruction to the actor, these issues can be minimized. The lavalier can also be secured in the hair with two pay clips and run directly over the crown of the head and down the back. This method, however, takes a great deal more time to complete, and with the limited amount of time that we have per show, this method for us isn't practical. I personally love using halo mics and prefer them over the earpieces for a couple of reasons. I like the simplicity of miking the actor without a lot of mic tape. I like the fact that they are nearly invisible, and I think they give the best overall natural sound. Plus, it will be nearly impossible to overload that microphone and cause distortion, breath noises, and plosives. Hopefully this will give you a little better understanding of the options that are out there for theater microphones and what's going to work best for you. Join us for our next video when we will discuss how to secure the microphones to the actors so that they will stay in place. You can always check us out on Facebook or at GoodSoundDesign.com. If you need some assistance in choosing wireless microphone elements, or need to rent or purchase wireless microphones, please let us know. We carry most major brands. And as always, thanks for joining us here at Good Sounds. And remember, if it can't be heard, it can't be good. Thanks.